Hello, my sweet peeps. Today, I have an advanced English vocabulary masterclass for you. And by the end of this masterclass, you're going to have all the vocabulary that you need to express your ideas fluently and confidently. Welcome back to Junto com o Nativo. I'm Sa and his daddy. Hi, now, yes, how are you guys? I hope everybody are good. You're welcome, daddy, to another class in our channel. How are you doing? I'm doing well, and thank you for having me again. And I hope everyone out there is having a great time. So thanks for you all coming and watching our show. So I hope um, you guys get something out of today's lessons. And how are you, Saul? Oh, I'm great, really happy, because that is the second day. Uh, and uh, we started yesterday, the first class about phrasal verbs and let's go on, yes? Yes. Yesterdays. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So let's get started. We will go to start this masterclass with phrasal verbs because native speakers love use uh, phrasal verbs. So knowing them, you will sound be more fluently natural. So and it will help you to understand better native speakers. So let's learn another group of phrasal verbs and then in the end you can complete a quiz and then move on to another group of phrasal verbs. So let's get started with your first group, your second group today. We recorded the first, now the second. So the first one, could you read, Daddy? To abide by, to accept, follow a decision or rule. Do you have something to share about? Um, yeah, so, so to abide by. So we say, you make sure you abide by the rules. Um, if you're driving down the road, follow the signs, all the signs, and make sure you kind of read up on some of your driving rules. So that would be abide by. Oh. As a tourist, you have to abide by the rules of the country you're visiting. Because you don't want to have to go to court when you're back in Brazil. Because <laughs> it's usually about a month out. Is that the same with you guys? Yes, for so, sure. Yeah, when you have to go to court, it's usually a month away. You'll probably be back home by then. <laughs> oh, that's amazing, yes. So I think you told everything, yes? I read something yeah. else. Uh, yeah. Well, uh, so th that first one, uh, to abide by, I could say, uh, this is more of a formal phrasal verb because it's used when you accept or follow a rule or regulation. So we use it mainly about government rules, store rules, even business rules, rules as well. For example, as a tourist, you have to abide by the rules of the countries you're visiting. So if you see a sign that you says, no parking, you have to abide by that rule. You have to follow that rule. Now remember, when we also use this to say, you simply accept, you accept, but then you follow it. For example, let's say you go to court because of a dispute and the court doesn't rule in your favor. You are still having to abide by that decision. You have to accept it and then follow it. So this is 
a more formal phrasal verb, but it is very useful because we all have to abide by many different rules, regulations, and policies. Very good. Yes, you can go on then. To dawn on, to finally realize or understand, or it came back to mind. One day it just dawned on me that I need to change careers. Go ahead, Saul. Okay. Yes, so uh, in that one, the second one, uh, what we could uh, say about that? Uh, to do on, uh, this is an excellent phrasal verb to add to your daily vocabulary. To do on is when you finally realize or understand something. For example, as that it read, yes, is here. One day it just dawned on me that I needed to change careers. So one day I just realized I need to change career. So you can absolutely say realize just using the phrasal verb done on and it's extremely common. Now notice the sentence is structure here. It dawned on me. Something dawns on someone. So the it is the realization. It dawned on me that I need to change career. So just keep that in mind because the sentence structure is commonly used with it, don't, and on and then in someone. Into the next one. Well, I was gonna say, it's very similar to it, I just realized, or um, I just thought about, or uh, it just came to me that I need to change careers. All those would have worked the same, but they're all yeah. the same, yes. Oh, good. We want you to plan our 300 person wedding in three weeks to pull it off. To pull off, to be able to do something difficult or unlikely to do. As in, Saw wants us to plan our 300 person wedding in three weeks. And I said, what? 300? I don't know if I could pull that off. So here we are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. so, uh, to pull off, uh, yes, yeah, as, uh, as uh, actually you already um, uh, told an example and it was easier to to understand i think now to explain that phrase of verb number three triple wolf yes yeah, so something this, yes this is also a muscle phrase of verb when you pull something off you're able to do something that is difficult or unlikely to do for example Let's say you are a wedding planner and a couple comes to you and tells you they want to have this huge 300 person wedding in three weeks and they want you to plan everything. That's really difficult and it might even be unlikely that you're able to plan a 300 person ready in three weeks. So you could say, I don't know if I can pull that off. I don't know if I can do that because it's very difficult. 
I don't know if I can pull that off. That means planning the 300 person wedding. Now let's say you do successfully plan the wedding after you could say, I can't believe I pulled that off. I can't believe I pulled that planning a 300 person wedding in only three weeks. And now the number four. To back out of, to fall or to fail to keep a com commitment or promise. As in, I backed out of one of our uh, sessions here a few days ago. Oh, good. And so I was upset, but I told her I'd make it up to her. I can't believe the client backed out of the last minute. As in, when we were having... Uh, when we were in court and we were supposed to have our client come and testify but then he backed out and had to reschedule everything so that was an example okay so oh, great yes so uh, that's a good one yes really good um and uh, what else could I say uh, about to back out of? Is this an excellent uh, business phrasal verb? Verb it's used to fail to keep a commitment or, or, or a promise. Now, in a business context, a commitment could be something you agree to or arrange to. It can be formal and you ha have a contract in place or it could be more informal and you just agree to it verbally. So if you don't keep that commitment, then you back out of it. For example, as that it read, I can't believe, oh, you did <laughs> I can't believe the client backed out at the last minute. Now notice here, I just said back it out. I didn't use the of. We only use the of when you specify the noun, the something. I can't believe the client backed out of the agreement, the project, the plan, the proposal at the last minute. Yes, I can't believe it. No. The client back it out of the plan at the last minute. Let's go on. That it could yeah. read. Good examples. To clam up something that we uh, tend to do. To be unable to speak because of fear, nervousness, or to refuse to speak. So... Like I, I, I'll be on this channel with Saw, and sometimes she wants me to speak some of these, and it's pretty nerve wracking sometimes. So I'll clam up and kind of do like oh, now. <laughs> so, anyways, uh, go on here. Let's say you got a couple here. I always clam up when I'm public speaking. Oh, that's for sure. Uh, another one, if you feel like you're going to clam up, just take a deep breath. Or they used to say, imagine everyone naked in front of you. That's what they would say. Mm -hmm. So go ahead. So. Oh, good. <laughs> so, yes, great, Daddy. Uh, and it's interesting what you told about and we, it can be... Uh, more clear, I say. Yes. Uh, so to clam up, this is an excellent phrasal verb for 
all of you or anyone that does public speech speak in because when you climb up you're unable you to speak usually because of fear or nervousness but this can be also used when you simply uh, refuse it for whatever reason for example i always climb up when i'm public speaking when i'm public speaking i become unable to speak the words out so my advice to you if you feel like you're going to climb up just take a deep breath That was number that six was you can go on that to mole over to mole it over you have a mullet mole it over uh, <laughs> to think about consider something in order to make or or and in order to make a decision so an, an example i would say yeah, saw saw asked if I wanted to go to Italy. And I said, Well, I'll have to mull it over. It means I have to think it over. Think about it. Consider something. So another one. Give me a few days to mull it over. Okay. Oh, and I'll give that to you. Um and then there's another one she wrote down here. I need to mull the deal over before I commit it using the tool it. That's mm -hmm. good. I like how you did that. Yes. You're very smart. Go ahead, Saw. Explain. Okay. Yes. Uh, uh great to add something and uh, what i could say about to move over when you move something over you think about it or you consider it and the something you're normally over you simply a, a, an idea or an proposal a suggestion you mow it over, you think about it, you consider it. So let's say you're in a meeting and a client and a client or a colleague suggests a new tool to use. And you need to think about it. So you could say, give me a few days to mow it over and I will get back to you. So to mow it over, it's being used the tool purchasing the tool whatever you're going to do give me a few days to move it over now you can also specify the noun and you can say i need to mold the deal over before i commit that was excellent and the next one to pan out, pan out, how a situation develops. This is going to pan out. I just know it. Our channel is going to pan out. Yeah. For sure. I'm not sure how the merger will pan out. Uh, the merger didn't pan out as well as we had expected. You're good. Yes. Go ahead, Saul. Yes, great. Uh, 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 so that one, number seven, to pen out, is this an extremely common phrase of verb? To pen out simply talks about how a situation develops. For example, as that it read, I'm not sure how the this merger will pan out so the situation here is the merger 
and we're talking about uh, well how's the merger going to go how is it going to develop will it be positive will it be negative will there be challenges or difficult benefits that's how the situation develops so here i'm saying i'm not sure i'm not sure how the merger will pan out now let's say the merger had some difficulties or challenges you could say the merger didn't pan out didn't develop the merger the merger didn't pan out as we had expected number eight daddy to rumble on or to ramble on man i can't even read my own words <laughs> to talk to talk at a length without getting to the point <laughs> Used as a negative criticism to ramble on. You're rambling on again, honey. <laughs> to keep rambling. The speaker rambled for 20 minutes. Yeah, the speaker rambled on for 20 minutes and never got to the point. So we wasted my time. Yes. Yes, you thought everything, yes? Yeah. Uh -huh. Yes, yeah, so uh, this number eight to, to ramble on, uh, this is an excellent one for all you public speakers because when you ramble on, you talk at length without getting to the point. So let's say I rambled on for five minutes trying to explain the definition of ramble on and at the end you didn't understand it at all and you're confused you're a little annoy, annoyed because I wasted your time. I rambled, I rambled on. So it is used as a negative and is used to communicate an idea. So generally is used this as a complaint to the speaker rambled on for 20 minutes. The speaker rambled on for 20 minutes and now number nine <laughs> the one i was doing yesterday to yeah. not to I fall asleep <laughs> for a short period of time when you shouldn't as i was doing on our last channel if you guys happen to watch it yeah so to nod off or as I was driving home from work the other day, I was nodding off. Not good, not good. Um, I always listen to loud music so I don't nod off. Or open a window in the car and get some fresh air, it helps so you don't nod off. Yes, that's a good idea. Yes. Some time ago I was traveling and it was, uh... I was I was tired already. I did a lot in that day. So I, I did that. Some fresh yeah. air and some loud loud music also <laughs> to help me. Even though Coffee. it wasn't so, so easy to get by. Yeah. It's never fun nodding off while you're driving. No, it's so scary. I had a story from somebody that did that and they woke up and she seen the top of the trees. What? Was Not it scary. was it snowing? No. no, she was flying through the air. Whoa. 
one minute you're on the road and you wake up and you see tops of trees. That's not a very good feeling. Oh, not at all. No. Yes, yeah, so it makes you think about you driving driving while you're tired. So oh yes. Go ahead. Yeah, not explain it. Drive when you're tired. I don't For think you're sure really yes, yeah, so to not off this is when when you fall asleep. But is when you fall asleep usually for a very short very period of time and you usually when you're not supposed to. So this is not when you go to bed at the end of the night. Okay, so let's say you're in a meeting at work and your colleague is rambling on and the topic is very boring and uh, you start doing this. <laughs> that is nodding off and this motion of your head what i'm doing <laughs> this is the verb to nod your head so when you fall asleep what do you what do you do you nod your head so that is where this phrasal verb come comes from so, and remember to use this for a short periods of time, usually when you're not supposed to fall asleep. And this example, when you're driving, so might say, I always listen to loud music when I'm driving at night. So I don't nod off. Very good. And number 10. To luck out, to be lucky in a specific situation, or as I would say, I lucked out because I met a beautiful young woman. That's pretty lucky. And, or you could say I won the lottery, whatever. <laughs> I lucked out. That's amazing. Thank yes. you. Yeah. I say the same. I'm a lucky woman. <laughs> you lucked out. Yes, I'm. I'm lucked out. Very yeah, good. So this number ten, I love this phrasal verb. To look out. When you look out, you're very lucky in a specific situation. So let's say there is uh, this major sale on the new iPhone model and they are selling for 50% off and you go to the store and you get the new one, the, the very last one. You could say, I can't believe I locked out and got the new iPhone for 50% off. You look it out. You are very lucky in this specific situation. Or let's say you're driving during rush hour and you go into an appointment and you get park spot right in front of the office in rush hour downtown you can say i can't believe i like it out and got such an amazing parks parking spot or if you if you're telling that story to a friend i got this parking spot right in front of the building downtown during rush hour they could say, wow, you're really lucked out. You're really yeah. lucked out by getting this parking, this parking spot. So yeah. are you ready for your next quiz? Here are the questions. Hit pause and complete the quiz now.
Here are the answers. Hit pause and compare your answers to the correct answers. So how would you do? Share your score and let's continue in your next group of phrasal verbs in the next class. Thanks, Daddy. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. One everybody more day mm -hmm. that God gave to us. Mm, yes. yes. Again, for having me. And I um, hope everyone had a good time. I did. I hope to see you guys tomorrow. Yes, I hope to see you guys tomorrow. Bye-bye. See you soon. Thanks for a while. Thanks, Daddy. I Thank appreciate you, it. Yes. See you we'll soon. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow.